Hello friends, today we shall discuss factors affecting performance of bitumen mixes and there can be several factors which are essential for the performance of a bitumen mix. I have listed nine factors here. Workability, tender mix, durability, moisture susceptibility, stiffness, resistance to permanent deformation, resistance to fatigue cracking, permeability and thermal fracture. Workability is the ease of handling, placing and compacting a mix and it depends upon the aggregate gradation and binder content. Mixtures with a high proportion of coarse particles are prone to segregation and may be difficult to compact. Workability can also be affected by too much or too little filler in the mixture and the mix becomes less workable when the temperature is too low. And workability is important for high performance binders also because their viscosity in the binder is quite high. And air wires can be a good indicator to determine the workability of a bitumen mix. But IRC SP139 2023 which is the code dealing with high performance binders and high performance mixes recommends workability of high performance mixes by using gyratory compactor at the compaction temperature and after 45 number of gyrations air wired in the mix should be less than or equal to 6%. If this condition of air wires is satisfied then mix is expected to be quite workable. Workability can be improved by increasing the binder content, by reducing the binder viscosity, limiting the nominal maximum aggregate size to less than one third of the layer thickness and also by compacting the mix at correct temperature. Second is tender mix. A tender mix is an internally unstable mix that tends to displace literally and shove rather than compact under roller or leave longitudinal cracks at the edge of the steel drum. This can be observed in the field during compaction when the mix forms ripples in front of the roller. Either a lack of friction between particles or a lack of shear strength in the mix essentially causes tenderness. A tender mix will leave longitudinal cracks at the edge of the steel roller or steel drum. And there can be several reasons but aggregate gradation and binders viscosity are the main. Aggregate properties like shape, texture and gradation and also amount of filler will affect the shear strength of a mixture. Aggregates that are round and smooth create less friction and slip under shear stress. And to avoid this problem, utilize crushed aggregates with rough texture. Gradation is also very important. Sand size particles in the gradation, that is material passing 2.36 millimeter, tend to be rounded and act as ball bearing. Rounded fine aggregate particles may allow larger particles to roll within the mix structure and if natural sand is used in the mix then this problem is almost certain. A hump in the gradation at the 300 micron size can also lead to tender mix. Therefore it is important to keep filler binder ratio in the range of 0.6 to 1.2 and try not to blend the aggregate too close to the lower limit of the condition range. Binder grade and binder content in the mix are also important. Selection of stiffer binder can help reduce the problem of tenderness. Similarly, too much binder in a mix contributes to excessive fluidity and that will cause the aggregate to float around. Low shear strength and low friction are byproduct of high binder content in the mix. IRC SP135 2022 identify the causes and remedial measures for tender mix. These are listed here. High mix temperature then allow mix to cool and then compact. If the mix is tender because of high binder content, reduce the binder content or increase the filler content in the mixture. If rounded aggregates are used, the mix is certain to be tender and therefore it is always advised to use crushed aggregates. Excessive fines in the range of 0.3 to 0.6 millimeter size can also create tenderness in the mix 
and therefore it is important to check the fine aggregate gradation. Insufficient filler meet the requirement of job mix formula. Filler should have 2% hydrated lime. It can also be because of poor bonding due to improper tack coat and therefore this problem can be removed by cleaning of the spray bar at the end of the day. Mixes contaminated with petroleum product can also be tender mix and therefore care must be taken to avoid contamination due to diesel or other oils during construction. Durability Durability of the bitter mix is its ability to resist binder aging, loss of volatiles, disintegration of aggregates, and stripping of binder. And durability can be improved by using an appropriate binder with 6 to 8 micron film thickness. And I have another video on how to calculate film thickness in a bitterness mix. You can watch that video. Durability can also be improved by use of dense aggregate packing with low air wire, by use of sound and durable aggregates, and also by using hydrated lime or some anti-stripping additives in the mixture. Moisture susceptibility. ITS, that is indirect tensile strength and tensile strength ratio, are the indicator of moisture susceptibility of asphalt mixture. And I have explained these two parameters in another video. In brief, a total of six Marshall specimens are prepared at optimum binder content with an average air wires of 7%. And these six specimens are divided into two subsets. And one set is subjected to conditioning. And the second sub subset of three specimens is testing without conditioning. Then indirect tensile strength of both the sets is estimated and then TSR that is tensile strength ratio is estimated using this equation that is ITS of conditioned specimen and ITS of unconditioned specimen. And this TSR should be as far as possible more than 80%. The fifth one is stiffness and this is the ability of the bitumen mix to carry and spread traffic loads to underlying layers. The key factors which affect the stiffness of bitumen mix are traffic loading time, temperature, binder content and binder rheology, and aggregate packing. Resilient modulus is an indicator of stiff stiffness of the mix and it should be determined in the laboratory. But rough idea of MR or resilient modulus can be taken from the ITS that is indirect tensile strength test. MR is 11.088 into ITS minus 3015.8 when it is to be estimated for dense bitumen macadam. And here, because of larger size of aggregate, 150 millimeter diameter specimen is to be considered. In case of top layer that is bitumen concrete, MR can be estimated from this equation, where the diameter of the specimen is 100 millimeter, or mixes are prepared with modified binder. However, as far as possible, MR value should be estimated directly in the laboratory and these equations should be used very sparingly as their validity for all types of binders and aggregate is doubtful. The sixth parameter affecting performance of a asphalt mixture is resistance to permanent deformation. That is resistance to rutting. Rutting failure in bitumen layers is a common premature distress observed in flexible pavements with thick bitumenous layers. And the wheel tracking test is conducted to assess the rating performance of mix in the laboratory. Several agencies have developed pass fail criteria through monitoring of mixes in the field as well as in the laboratory. IRC SP 135 has suggested measurement of rut depth at 20,000 cycles and test should be carried out on 150 millimeter diameter cylindrical specimen compacted to 7% air wires with a V load of 700 Newton and at a speed of 25 load cycles per minute. And the accumulated rut depth at the end of 20,000 cycle should be limited to these values. For a traffic level of less than 10 MSA, the maximum rut depth which is specified is 6.4 millimeter. For a traffic level of more than 50 MSA, it should be 1.9 and 
ml that is as per irc sp 135 2022 irc sp 139 2023 which is a code dealing with high performance mixes and high performance binder it suggests that rut depth using wheel tracker on a small small device at 60 degree centigrade should be limited to 6 mm after 30,000 cycles. That is the criteria given in IRC SP139 for rut depth. Resistance to fatigue cracking and resident modulus is a good indicator of resistance of a mix to fatigue cracking. It depends upon the grade of the binder, aggregate gradation and air wires in the mix. The modulus value should be obtained by carrying out indirect tensile fatigue test at 35 degree centigrade as per ASTM D73909. And for DBM, a 150 millimeter diameter specimen may be used because of larger size of aggregate and for BC layer, 100 millimeter diameter specimen is recommended. IRC 37-2018 has suggested indicative values of resident modulus of different types of mixes and binders, BC and DBM with BG10, it should be 1000 and BC with modified binder should be 1600 MPa. For VG40, it is 3000 MPa. But IRC SP139, which provides guidelines for high performance mixes, it says that the ITFT should be conducted at 25 degree centigrade and the minimum fatigue life of 10,000 cycles should be obtained at an initial strain of 100 micron. The resident modulus should be more than or equal to 4,000 MPa for unmodified binders and more than 3,500 for modified binders. Now here unmodified binders is which is produced in the refinery by using a process called propane deasphaltine method, PDA method, whereas modified binders are those which are produced or which are made after modification of VG30 or VG40 by mixing some modifiers into the bitumen. Permeability. Permeability means the amount of air, water and water vapor that can pass through the mixture. A low permeability in dense bitumen mix surfacing increases the durability and protects the underneath layer from moisture damage. And permeability can be estimated using the procedure as given in EN 12697. The factors that can reduce the permeability of a bitumen mix include higher binder content with higher film thickness, dense aggregate packing and well compacted bitumen layers. And the last factor which affects the performance in the field is thermal fracture. That is the cracking of asphalt pavements caused by extremely low temperature. Low temperature cracking is one of the major distresses in asphalt pavements since it is irreversible and expensive to repair and it can be a serious problem in cold regions as well as in areas with large daily temperature fluctuations. Use of polymer modified binders, high quality aggregates and additives that improve the low temperature properties of the mixes can be utilized, can be used to improve thermal fracture property of the asphalt mixture. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, please write in the comment box.